grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you. Welcome to this time of worship. Let us stand and sing, Jesus Christ is risen today. Please join me in the call to worship. This is the day. Here's our right to pray. Shattered hearts are mended. Here's our place with joy. This is the day the Lord rolls away the stone of fear, throws off death's clothes, and goes to help us in the God's future. This is the day the Lord has made. This is the day, Easter Day. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Let us pray together. Very early on that first day, you caught chaos unaware, astounding God, planting grace in a garden, setting love loose on creation, flinging joy into the air. Very early on that first day, Jesus, Son of Justice, you staggered sin, throwing its weight off the world. You confounded death, leaving it alone in the grave. You opened the gates of the kingdom so all could follow you into life. Very early on this first day of the week, while we were washing sleep from our eyes and trying to make sense of our lives, you sang glad songs to us, sacred spirit, rolling away fears from our hearts so we can see the risen Lord, God in community, holy in one, very early on this first day of the week, as we do on every day of our lives, 
we lift our praise to you. Amen. Let us turn to one, one of our inserts. I know it's confusing. We have lots of inserts. I was telling the choir, my favorite music just isn't in the hymnal. So we will sing Christ Arose. God created all that is good and beautiful. Very early in the morning, a mother placed her newborn in a manger. Very early in the morning, the good news was shared with frightened friends that Jesus was risen and alive in our midst. Let us confess the fears and the amazement we bring this morning. Let us pray together. On this morning of hallelujahs, we must confess how human we are, emptier of tombs, we haven't done any great evil, but we have failed to do good when we had the chance. We have not intentionally hurt anyone, nor have we offered healing to the broken. We easily accept the witness of the angel in the tomb, but find it difficult to share this good news with our friends and neighbors. Bring us new life, dazzling God. Where we are tired and stressed, give us the energy to serve your creation. Transform our hardened hearts into fountains of grace. Forgive us for all the damage we have done and fill us with the joy of your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, who gives us new life, we pray. Amen. God, our creator, gives us new life. Christ, our redeemer, prepares a table for us. Holy Spirit, our joy, calls us to service. This is the good news. The tomb is empty. Sin is powerless. Death is defeated forever.
Now let us share the peace of Christ with one another.
Let us bow our heads in prayer. Awesome God, we thank you for this special day when we remember the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God, we ask that you speak to us through your holy word. Open up our hearts and our minds. Transform us into the people you created us to be. In all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our responsive reading for today may be found on page 732 in your pew Bibles. It is Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2, and verses 14 through 24. Tell the Lord how thankful you are, because he is kind and always merciful. Let Israel shout, God is always merciful. My power and my strength come from the Lord, and he has saved me. With his mighty arm, the Lord wins victories. The Lord is powerful. He punished me terribly, but he did not let death lay its hands on me. Open the gates of justice. I will enter and tell the Lord how thankful I am. Here is the gate of the Lord. Everyone who does right may enter this gate. I praise the Lord for answering my prayers and saving The stone that the builders tossed aside has now become the most important stone. This day belongs to the Lord. Let's celebrate and be glad today. Our gospel lesson for this morning comes from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. This morning I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, And he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, Tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, 
I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. A couple of years ago, a conference was called together, and the name of it was Why Christian? At this conference, pastors, journalists, bloggers, parents, poets, activists, and seminarians testified about their faith. Why Christian? Was the question they attempted to answer in their moving and often pain-filled narratives. Why amidst all the challenges and disappointments of life in the United States or in other places in the world, the historic and contemporary failures of the church, the faith-shaking traumas of their own past, why do they still have skin in the game? Why are you a Christian? Story after story was shared about how these people found hope in the midst of great trauma, of hope in the midst of struggle. They shared how in the midst of pain, loss, and disappointment, they found the inexplicable love of God. This is what happened when they saw the Lord. I'm a Christian because I know I have a creator that made me and loves me. I have a savior that will forgive me of my sins and lead me to eternal life in my heavenly home with all those loved ones that have gone on ahead of me. I have a sustainer that will guide me and lead me all the days of my life. We are here this morning to celebrate Easter, the high point of the Christian year. With Easter flowers, great music, and Easter banners, we proclaim the triumph of Christ rising from the dead. The wilderness of Lent is behind us. The tomb is empty and a bright New day has dawned. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. I love Easter. I love the joy and celebration of worship. I love the music. I love the triumphal and victorious proclamation of Jesus' miraculous resurrection. I have to admit I love gathering my family around a table laden with our traditional Easter food. As I was studying this gospel text this past week, I noticed how the story of the resurrection starts in the early morning, in darkness. That's where Easter really begins. It begins in the darkness. It begins with fear, bewilderment, pain, and profound loss. Easter begins in darkness. All of us know such darkness. We know what it feels like to be in pain, to deal with profound loss, and to be uncertain about our future. We know what it means to struggle, be broken, and to hunger. We see a world around us where there are is a lot of darkness, inexplicable war, and death. People who are literally starving to death, dying from horrible diseases. People who are profoundly lonely and grieving. We know and are familiar with darkness. And that is where Easter starts, in the dark. The fact is, the resurrection happened in total darkness. Sometime in the pre-dawn hours of that first Easter morning, a great mystery transpired in secret. 
No sunlight illuminated the event. No human being witnessed it. And even now, over 2,000 years later, no human narrative can contain it. It exceeds all of our attempts to pin it down because it's a mystery known only to God. Whatever the resurrection was and is, its fullness lies in holy darkness, shielded from our eyes. All we can know is that somehow in an ancient tomb on a starry night, God worked in secret to bring life out of death. Somehow from the heart of loss and misery, God enacted salvation. In our gospel story, Mary Magdalene sees Jesus first because she chooses to remain in the darkness Peter and the beloved disciple leave when they see the empty tomb, but Mary stays, bewildered and bereft. And then, miracle of miracle, Mary Magdalene declares, I have seen the Lord. Mary moves out of the darkness into the light and finds hope. She has seen the Lord. And we are witnesses to the moment when Mary meets the risen Lord. Her grief turns to joy, and she brings to us the good news that has been proclaimed throughout all the ages. I have seen the Lord. This is what happens when ordinary people brush up against an extraordinary God. We see the Lord. The story of Jesus does not end with his tragic death. The stories of resurrection are Jesus' followers' way of saying that Jesus was not just a fading memory of a religious martyr to them. In fact, many of Jesus' followers actually experienced his presence more after his death than before. This Easter, I invite you to talk about resurrection, to talk about the places in your life where you have seen the Lord. In the end, resurrection is not about death. It is about those who have found new life. The resurrection is about a new beginning, a new transformation. What is different in your life because of resurrection. How will you live your life differently because of the resurrection? What is your new story? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Now let us turn to our insert and stand and sing Because He Lives.
Now let us affirm what we believe by saying the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Michael has a minute for mission he would like to share. Uh, good morning. Actually, I have uh, two announcements to make. Um, one of them is that uh, Celebrate Redwood Falls is holding their Night Falls uh, event again this year, and we would like to have a site out there again, um, as we did last year. I don't know. Most of you were probably there. It was down by the bridge. So we'd like to get some volunteers to come help set up the lights and then later that week take them back down again. Um, so if you want to either contact uh, Pastor Scott or myself, uh, we'll set up a list. And the times I think we kind of set with the session would be um, to set it up Tuesday evening from 6 to 8, and then that will give us a chance to make sure they look real nice. And then we'll take them down Sunday afternoon. Um, we'll kind of figure that out later. So. And then my second one is, uh, it is we are taking the collection for one great hour of sharing today. There's envelopes in your pews there. And um, the part of where the money goes to is, is included in this minute for mission. Unstable connection. Those two words have taken on a deeper meaning in the past couple of years, haven't they? For many, the words unstable connection, weak connection, or worse, lost connection, are synonymous for an online meeting that has become frozen or dropped off. These dreaded words popping up on phone or computer mean whatever is being offered isn't getting through. It isn't able to be shared. The connection is in jeopardy. But simply stated, we fundamentally need to connect people. people are, we need to connect. People need to connect. Through our church, we connect in whatever way we are able with one another and celebrate the many ways God connects with us. During Lent, we celebrate that God connects with us through Jesus' resurrection and connects us with those who have least. That's how Matthew 25 puts it, and that's what one great hour of sharing is all about. Connecting people who experience oppression, need loss or lack, those are the people Jesus connected with. The Bible says, and they are the people we are invited to connect with today. One Great Hour Sharing is the largest way Presbyterians connect with one another and with our neighbors in need. We join with people whose connections are too often unstable, people experiencing poverty, oppression, hunger, and disaster. The church offers gifts of prayer, understanding, and support by participating in ministries of poverty alleviation and natural and human-caused disaster relief as well as self-development to ensure dignity for all. Because of our gifts to One Great Hour of Sharing, we connect with the Multicultural Alliance for a safe environment in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Together, we unite to halt environmental degradation and its impact on the people of the Navajo Nation by assisting in a collaborative effort to secure access to clean water and thus address the large numbers of birth defects, miscarriages, and types of cancer impacted on our neighbors there. And if you're not sure what happened there, uh, they have uh, a dump there where all the radioactive material was and the dam broke and it polluted all of their water in that area. We connect with the Resource Center in Matamoros at the southern border of the United States who accompanies our neighbors who are seeking asylum due to economic problems, violence and corruption. Together we share food, tents and blankets as well as a place for the refugees to have access to legal teams medical teams, and social support services. One Great Hour Sharing connects us with the Civil Society Coalition for Poverty Eradication in Northern Nigeria, 
where cycles of conflict and food insecurity have been a tragic reality. For over 70 years, the offerings of thousands of congregations like ours have come together to participate in God's healing, tending and growing to create a world where all needs are met. Through one great hour of sharing, we stabilize, we strengthen those who are weak, we connect. Let us pray. Heal us, O Savior, that we might understand and grow our relationship with all those in need. Thank you for connecting us with one another and with you. Amen. Thank you, Michael. Uh, please take note, I will be on vacation next week. Uh, we're going out to visit Elizabeth in, in Salt Lake. Uh, the Reverend Anna Williamson will be covering in case of a pastoral emergency, and her cell phone is listed there. And if you call her, please leave a message. Uh, take note that also that Ruby's Pantry is happening on Tuesday, April 19th. Peacemakers are meeting at 9 a.m., Youth Club at 3.45 p.m. on Wednesday. We have some birthdays to honor. Today it is Cassie Jewels. On the 19th, it's Elizabeth Prouties. We're her birthday gift. <laughs> on the 20th, it's uh, Don Dagner and Carter Whitman's. On the 21st, it's Leon King's. And on the 22nd, it's Faith Bruns. I will get the special hangers. Leon, which birthday are you having? 67. 66. I'm jumping ahead. Don't, don't need yourself. And you have a special guest with you today. Yes, my granddaughter Donka is here with us for the first time. Welcome. Welcome. We'll give you a hanger too. That's what you get for hanging around us. Yeah. Uh, any other birthday folks with us? Anyone else having a special occasion? I'm going to give Blake a hanger. He was our cross bearer on Good Friday. So thank you, Blake, for doing that. Are there any other announcements or joys or concerns? If not, let us bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for always being there for us. At this time, we come before you with joys and concerns written on our hearts and our minds. We lift all of them up to you. God, if we pray for people that are grieving over the loss of a loved one, Please surround them with your hope and your mercy and your love. God, we thank you for the gift of new life. We celebrate Leanne Heimer's a new grandchild. We ask that you bless this child. God, I lift up this entire congregation and I ask that you bring healing to us wherever we may need it in our lives, whether it be physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. God, we pray for all people in the world that are suffering at this time. We ask that you send people to them that can help. Continue to work through us as a church. May we be the answer to someone's prayer. God, we pray for peace in the world. We lift up the people of Ukraine. We ask that you bless and watch over them and keep them safe. God, we pray that the aggression of Russia will stop.
God, we lift up all of our family members and friends and ask for your blessing upon them. Now let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue our worship with this morning's offering. Let us pray together. Very early in our lives, you crept in to anoint us with your overflowing abundance. We offer our gifts in thanksgiving so that they may be used to serve all whose mornings bring heartache, whose days are filled with hopelessness, whose nights wrap around their souls with fears and worries. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us turn to our final insert and sing, He Lives. Now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.